holy tails. Hello, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends, Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, come out, come out, wherever you are. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing. Tubby, Freckles, and Gumbo, how are you today? Hello, Holy. We are all fine. We have come to listen to another story from the Bible. It's so much fun. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait a second. But you do know what you have to do after my story is over? Yes, we know. We have to answer a question. Good. Now let us start with the story. Long, long time ago, in a city called Ramah, there lived a man called Elkanah and his wife called Hannah. They had no son, so they prayed to the Lord for a baby boy. God heard their prayers and blessed them with a son, who they named Samuel. Hannah, in her prayers, had promised the Lord that if she had a son, she would give him back to the Lord to serve him all his life. Hannah remembered her promise to the Lord, and when Samuel grew up to be a young boy, his parents took him to Shiloh, to the house of the Lord. The priest of Shiloh was Eli. Hannah spoke to Eli about her promise made to the Lord. She said, I asked God for this child, and he answered my prayers. So I am giving him to the Lord to serve him as long as he lives. Eli remembered Hannah and her prayers, and so took in Samuel to train him in the ways to serve the Lord. Elkanah and Hannah thanked the Lord, left Samuel with Eli, and went back home happily. Hannah had also promised that her son would never have his hair cut. Samuel grew up to be a Nazirite. The Nazirites were people who spent their entire lives in the service of God. So the question for you today is, what was the name of the city where Elkanah and his wife Hannah lived? The place was called Ramah, isn't it? Absolutely correct. I am so glad you listened carefully. I feel sleepy again. <sighs> See you soon, children. Bye-bye. Bye, Holy. See you. Hello, children. Hi, Holy. It's story time. I love to hear the stories from the Bible. Come on, Holy. What is today's story about? Today, I will tell you the story about Samuel. He was promised to God. But I'm sure you remember that you have to answer a question after I finish my story. Oh, yes. We sure do. So you better listen carefully. A long, long time ago, there lived a man called Elkanah and his wife called Hannah. Now Hannah had no children and was very unhappy about it. They went to Shiloh to offer their prayers to the Lord. After they finished their meal at the house of the Lord, Hannah felt very sad. She cried and prayed to the Lord for a son. Eli, the priest, was sitting by the door. Hannah prayed and made a promise to God. Dear Lord, if you give me a son, I promise that I will give him back to you to serve you all his life. Hannah went on praying for a long time while Eli watched her. She was praying silently, but her lips were moving. Eli thought she was just a silly woman and asked her to be quiet. She answered, I have been praying about my troubles to the Lord. Hearing this, Eli asked her to go back home. He was sure that the Lord would hear her prayers. The next day, Elkanah and Hannah went back home 
and a few days later she gave birth to a son because she asked the lord for him she named him samuel holy that was such a wonderful story i loved it gumbo don't be silly we all love the story not just you all right all right now don't you children fight amongst yourselves answer my question where did elkana and hana go to offer their prayers i know i know they went to shiloh excellent you have all been good children bye bye holy we shall be back soon for another story bye kids Wake up, Holy! We have come to hear another story from the Bible. Come on, wake up! Oh, yes. I know. I know. <clears throat> I will tell you a story. Oh, Holy, please do not waste any more time. Yes, and we also know that you will ask us a question after you have told us the story. All right. Now let us start with our story. Today, I shall tell you another story about Samuel the prophet. Long time ago, Eli, the priest of Shiloh, was training a young boy, Samuel, to serve the Lord. Months and years passed. Eli was now a very old man, and Samuel grew up to be a young man, preparing himself to serve the Lord. One night, suddenly, before dawn broke, Samuel heard a voice calling him. He thought it was Eli looking for him. He went to Eli's room, but it wasn't him who had called Samuel. This happened two more times. The third time, when Samuel went to Eli's room to see whether Eli had really called him or not, Eli understood that it was the Lord who was trying to speak to Samuel. So he sent him back to his room and said, "Next time, when the voice calls you, say, 'Speak, Lord, your servant is listening.'" Samuel went back to his room, and the voice called him again. He replied exactly the way Eli had taught him. God then spoke to Samuel and said, "I am going to punish Eli and his family because his sons have spoken evil things about me." No offering or sacrifice will ever remove the punishment of their sin. The next morning, Samuel told Eli what the Lord told him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was always with him. Soon the people of Israel believed that Samuel was indeed a man of the Lord. Now children, the question I will ask you today is Why did the Lord punish Eli and his family? He punished them because Eli's sons had spoken evil and bad things about the Lord. Yes, we would never do that. Calm down, Gumbo. It's all right. Now off with you children. See you soon. Good night, Holy. Sleep tight. Wake up, Holy. Wake up. It's time for you to tell us a story. I am not asleep, Tubby. I was just thinking of which story to tell all of you today. So, have you thought about it? Yes. Today, I will tell you a story about how the people of Israel get their first king. Long time ago, the people of Israel came to Samuel, a wise man of the Lord, asking him for a new king to rule them and their nation. So Samuel called the people of Israel together for a religious meeting at a place called Mizpah. Samuel said, "Today you don't want to obey the Lord. You have asked for a king. Well then, gather yourselves before the Lord by tribes and by clans." Then Samuel had each tribe come forward, and the Lord chose the tribe of Benjamin. Now the families of the tribe of Benjamin. were asked to come forward and the family of Matri was picked out from the family of Matri the son of Kish Saul was chosen as the king of Israel but Saul hid himself behind a large bag and was brought out by the people 
Saul was a strong man and a foot taller than anyone else. Samuel said to the people, Here is the man the Lord has chosen. The people of Israel were very happy at the anointment of the new king. Samuel explained to him the rights and duties of a king and wrote them in a book which he kept in a holy place. So this was the story of how Saul became the first king of Israel. So children, the question for today is, May I ask the question today? Please, please, please. Okay, go ahead. What was Saul's father's name? That was a good question. So, who will answer Tubby's question? I will, I will. His father's name was Tiff. No, it was Tish, silly. Well, he was close, Tubby. Now, off you go, children. I shall see you soon. Bye, Holly. See you. Where have you three been? I have been waiting for you today. We had a birthday party in the corner of the library. We got late because Tubby was busy eating cake. No, I was not. We are ready to listen to another story from the Bible. And we promise to listen carefully. All right then. A woman had prayed to the Lord for a son and had promised that if she did have one, she would offer him for service to God. Her son's name was Samuel, a wise man. During this time, the Israelites had an enemy called the Philistines. The Philistines wanted to fight the Israelites and take over the promised land. The Israelites decided to choose a king who could lead them into battle. So they went to Samuel to ask him for his help. They told him, You must find us someone fit to be a king. Samuel asked God for advice. God said to Samuel, They have rejected me, Samuel, not you. Do as they ask. Find them a king to lead them into battle. But explain to them what it means to have a king before you do anything else. Samuel went to the elders and said to them, I am ready to find you a king. But first you must understand what it will mean to have a king. He will take over your sons for the army and ask for taxes. He will also take one-tenth of your best produce. He will do what is best for you, but you will be under his rules and have to obey him. But the elders really wanted to have a king. So Samuel chose a handsome man called Saul. In the beginning, Saul proved to be a good king. He raised a strong army and fought the Philistines. But soon, he became very proud. He broke many religious laws and stopped listening to Samuel. Samuel said to Saul one day, So, since you have rejected God, God has rejected you as king. Samuel never saw Saul again after that day. He decided to look for a new king for the Israelites. Okay, Tubby. Who did Samuel choose as the king? I know! Samuel chose Saul as the king for the Israelites. That is very good, Tubby. Now, it is time to go and finish your homework. Bye-bye! Hello, children! I can see that you are back for another story. Yes, we are! We really want to listen to a story. Will you tell us one, please? All right, I will, but... Yes, yes, we know. We promise to pay attention. A long time ago, Samuel, a wise man, had chosen Saul as the king of the Israelites. But God had rejected him because he had become too proud. Often, when Samuel would think about Saul, his eyes would fill with tears. He was still upset by Saul's behavior. When God saw Samuel hurt, he said, Till when will you cry for Saul? It is foolish for you to do so, since you know I have rejected him as king. It is true that he will be punished. God told Samuel to fill his horn with holy oil and go to Bethlehem. God said, There is a farmer who lives there. His name is Jesse. I have chosen one of his sons to become the next king of Israel. So Samuel went to Bethlehem. 
he decided to have a feast in honor of God and called everyone in town. Everyone was excited about the feast. Jesse and his sons also came. Samuel called Jesse to introduce himself and his sons. One by one, they introduced themselves. Every time, Samuel would think to himself, Maybe this is the one chosen to be the king. But God would say, No. Soon Jesse had introduced all his sons, and yet Samuel had not found the one. Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all your sons? Jesse said, No, my youngest son David is looking after the sheep. Samuel quickly sent for David. When David finally arrived, Samuel said to him, One day you will be the king of Israel, but right now you are too young, so return to your sheep. But prepare yourself for the future, young man, because God has plans for you. Saying this, he poured holy oil on David's head in front of his brothers. From that day, the Spirit of God stayed with David. Now, my question is, what was the name of Jesse's youngest son who would be the next king of Israel? The answer is David, right? Yes. Very good, Gumbo. Now, off you go. Bye-bye. Hello, children. Hi, Holy. What a surprise. How come you're awake today? We thought you would be asleep, like always. <laughs> no, no. I don't feel sleepy today. I've thought of a wonderful story to tell you. I'm sure you're all going to find it very interesting. Really? Then let's not waste any more time. Please start your story, Holy. Of course. But you know that after the story, I am going to ask all of you one question. Yes, we know, we know. A long time ago, the Philistines, who were the people of Israel's greatest enemy, wanted to make the people of Israel their slaves. Saul was then the king of Israel. Saul and the Israelite army, all of them gathered to fight the Philistines. The Philistine army was standing on top of a hill and the Israelites on the opposite hill. In between these hills was a valley. In the Philistine army, there was a man called Goliath who was a scary, strong giant. He was almost eight feet tall and wore heavy bronze armor and a bronze helmet. Goliath came out from their camp to challenge the Israelites. He had a bronze javelin and a spear which was very thick and had sharp iron points. Goliath came in front of Saul and said, Choose one of your men to fight with me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. If I win, you will become our slaves. These words of Goliath really frightened King Saul and the people of Israel since they did not have anyone who could fight him. Whoa! Goliath sounds so dangerous! He must have been a zillion times bigger than me! My goodness! Yes, that he was. So, should I ask today's question? Yes, Holy, go ahead. What did Goliath have in his hand? I will answer this one. He had a bronze javelin and a sharp spear in his hand. Good answer, Freckles. Now I feel sleepy, children. I shall see you all soon for another story. Bye. Oh, hi, children. So you've come to hear another story from the Bible? Of course, Holy. You have to tell us another story. All right. Today I will tell you a story of David and how courageous and brave he was. Yes, yes. I love to hear stories of brave and strong men like David. I'm sure you do. Anyway, a long time ago, when Goliath, a giant bully in the Philistine army, challenged the Israelites to fight him, Saul and his people were extremely afraid. A young boy, David's three older brothers, were soldiers in the Israelite army. One day, David went to meet his brothers in the army. 
He arrived at the camp just when Goliath had come forward and challenged the Israelites once again. The people saw Goliath and ran away in terror. This only made Goliath laugh. David spoke to some of the men in the army and understood what was going on. He told them that he had a way to fight the giant. Some men from the army went and told King Saul about David, so he sent for him. When David came to the king, he said, Your Majesty, no one should be afraid of this Philistine. I will go and fight him. This confused Saul greatly. David was just a boy and Goliath a giant. It was impossible for him to fight Goliath. But he saw the courage in his eyes and allowed him to go ahead. Saul gave him all the weapons and armor that were necessary to fight Goliath, but David knew he could not fight with these. He was not used to it. So he took it all off and picked up his shepherd's stick instead. He chose five smooth stones from the stream and put them in his bag. With his sling in hand, he went out to fight Goliath. Wow, David is so courageous and brave. I am so in love with him. <laughs> Freckles, you are such a pretty little girl. If David had seen you, I am sure he would have fallen in love with you too. Now, today's question is, what did David take with him to fight Goliath? He took five guns. No, silly. He took his shepherd's stick and five smooth stones from the stream in his sling. Excellent, Freckles. Now, off you go, children. Hello. Today, I will tell you the story of David, the shepherd warrior. A long time ago, God was looking for a new king of Israel to replace King Saul, who had displeased him. God sent his servant Samuel to the house of Jesse and asked him to anoint one of his sons, the youngest, David, a young boy of 15 with the bright blue eyes and rosy cheeks, was chosen as the one and anointed. Since that day, God's spirit was always with David. King Saul was not happy because he had not made peace with God. David used to play the harp very well, so Saul's servants thought that the beautiful music played by David would cheer him up. And it did. David's music made the king feel better and slowly David was adored by the king. However, King Saul was unaware of the fact that David was anointed by Samuel and that he would become the future king of Israel. While Saul was the king of Israel, the Philistines continued to battle with them. One Philistine was a huge giant called Goliath. Goliath was nine feet tall and it was impossible for anyone to fight him. He kept on daring the Israelites, telling them, We Philistines will become the servants of the Israelites if someone could fight Goliath. But King Saul and his army were scared. David was extremely courageous and was not afraid of Goliath. With his shepherd's staff in hand, David went down to fight Goliath. David took out his slingshot and picked up five stones from a stream. He openly challenged Goliath and said, Come with a sword. Goliath noticed that David was carrying a shepherd's staff and he laughed at David. But David was not afraid. David ran towards Goliath, put a stone in his slingshot and hurled the stone deep into the giant's forehead. Surprisingly, Goliath fell to the ground and David won a great victory for Israel. That's a wonderful story. If one has faith, one can even bring down a giant. 
No questions today, please. We want to sing for you. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Holy. I hope you are up. We are here for a story from the Bible. Yes, I am hungry for a story. Okay, I will. But you have to promise to listen carefully, as at the end of the story, I will ask a question. We always do. All right, then. This story is about David and his harp. Saul was now the king of Israel, but God had rejected him because he was becoming a bad person. God had said that the next king of Israel would be one of the sons of a farmer called Jesse. This was David. Now King Saul was often very ill. He suffered from fits of madness and only music could make him feel better. He sent for his servants to get him a good musician who could play him music whenever King Saul had his attacks of madness. The servant said to Saul, Your Highness, there is a boy. His music is lovely and he's quite famous for his songs. Maybe we should call him. Saul ordered his servants, Call that boy to the court. The boy they were talking about was none other than David, the son of Jesse. David would often play his harp and sing while watching his sheep. Soon he had become famous for his music. Not only was he a good musician, he was also blessed to be the next ruler of Israel by God himself. So David was called to Saul's court. So whenever the king would get his attacks of illness, David would leave his sheep and run to him to play gentle and soothing music for Saul. David's music had a calming effect on the king. And soon, the king began to really like the little boy from Bethlehem who was able to bring peace to his disturbed mind. What he did not know was that this boy would be the next king. Now children, I hope you were listening carefully because I'm about to ask you the question. If you get it right, I will sing along with you. What did David play to soothe the king when he had his attacks? I know, I know. David would play his harp to soothe the king when he would have his attacks. That is right, Tubby. Well done. Hi, Holy. It's time for us to listen to a story from the Bible. Well, well. I was waiting for so long for you children. Come on, let us start with today's story. Today's story is about a lifelong friendship that David and Jonathan shared. Wow, that sounds nice, just like us. Yes, you can learn something about friendship too. But you do remember that you need to answer my question at the end of the story. Yes, yes, we know. Long time ago, a brave young man called David had defeated a Philistine giant called Goliath single-handedly. After this battle, when he returned to camp, Abner, who was King Saul's commander, took him to Saul. Seeing David, he was extremely pleased. Saul asked him, Young man, whose son are you? David answered, I am the son of Jesse from Bethlehem. Now King Saul's son was Jonathan. David's courage and bravery that day affected Jonathan very deeply. He was moved to love him like a brother. They had many things in common. From that day forward, they became best friends and never let anything or anyone come between them ever. As a gift of friendship, Jonathan gave David the beautiful robe he was wearing. Along with the robe, he also gave him his armor, sword, and his bow. From that day onwards, Saul kept David with him and did not let him go back to Bethlehem. David won all the battles to which Saul sent him and he soon was made an officer in his army. This made Saul, his officers and his men very happy. Wow! Thank you, Holy, for sharing with us such a wonderful story about friendship. Well, well, you are most welcome, children. So who wants to answer my question today? Oh, I will! 
I'm in love with David. All right. What was the name of the commander who took David to Saul? David? No, his name was Abner. You silly girl, you are quite obsessed with David. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Holy. We shall be back soon. It's story time, Holy. You've got to wake up. I know, I know. I will tell you all a story. A story. I have already thought about it. But I'm sure you children can remember that we need to answer a question at the end. Well then, a long time ago, King Saul of Israel had made David a brave man, an officer in his army. The people of Israel were very happy. He won all the battles that Saul sent him to fight. The Israelite women sang joyful songs in praise of David. They sang, Saul has won thousands, but David has won ten thousands. All these praises of David angered King Saul. He did not like it at all. He said, They give me less honor than David. Next, they will make him king. Saul was jealous of David. From that day onwards, he watched his actions and movements very carefully. The next day, suddenly, an evil spirit took control of Saul. He started behaving like a madman in his house. David was playing the harp like he did every day, and Saul was holding a spear. All of a sudden, he threw his spear at David. David moved just in time and thus was saved. Saul realized that the Lord was not with him anymore. So Saul sent David away to fight dangerous wars with a thousand men under his command. Even then, David managed to win all the battles. Saul became even more afraid of him, but the people loved David because he was such a good leader. David is so brave. I love him more and more every day. Stop it, Freckles. You are being silly. Anyway, Holy, you can go ahead and ask us the question. So, the question is, what did Saul attack David with while he was playing the harp? A spear! Yes, very good. Now, if you children will allow me, may I please go back to my nap? <sighs> <sighs> of course, Holy! Bye-bye! Wake up, Holy! Wake up! It's time for you to tell us a story! Yes, I remember, I remember! But do you children remember that you all will have to answer a question at the end of the story? Of course we do! Well, then let's not waste any more time. Shall I begin with my story? Now, all of you pay attention. A long time ago, when a young man, David, had come to Saul's court after winning against a giant called Goliath, King Saul's son, Jonathan, made a promise of lifelong friendship to David. A few months later, when David realized that Saul was trying to kill him, he went to Jonathan and told him all about it. When Jonathan heard everything, he was very confused as to why his father would want to kill his dear friend. To make Jonathan believe him, David said, Tomorrow is the New Moon Festival and I am invited to attend the king's dinner. If you agree, I will go and hide in the fields. Your father will ask why I am not at the table. Tell him that I got your permission to go to Bethlehem for the animal feast. If he becomes angry, you will know that he wants to kill me, or else I shall be safe. Jonathan understood what David was trying to say. He took him out in the fields and promised to him that he would do exactly what he had been told to do. He also promised, in the name of the Lord, that he would send him word if he understood that his father was really trying to kill his friend. In return, he made David promise that he would always keep his friendship and be good to his family. David promised to do that. Yes, they are awesome! 
We three shall always be such good friends for the rest of our lives. So what's today's question? Huh? Oh, oh, yes, the, the question. I just dozed off a bit. The question to you children is, for what occasion was David invited to Saul's court for dinner? It was a new moon festival. Well, well, right you are, Freckles. All right then. Bye, children. Bye, Holly. We will come, come back, back soon. soon. Hello there. I have been sitting and thinking about which story I should tell you today. Oh, great. I hope it's another story about the brave David. Yes, it is. But you have to listen carefully because I will ask a question at the end of the story. We always do, Holly. All right then. This story is about a young man, David, going into hiding. David, a young boy, was chosen by the Lord to be the next king of Israel after King Saul. Saul loved David and had made him the commander in the army. He was brave, handsome, and a good leader. It was not long before people started singing praises in the name of David. When King Saul saw this, he was very angry and jealous. He thought that soon his people would want David as their king, so he tried to kill him. David soon realized that, and so he went into hiding. He could not understand why the king had a sudden change of heart. David ran from one place to another to get away from King Saul and his many soldiers who were looking everywhere for him. One day, King Saul and his soldiers came near the cave where David had been hiding. It was night, so they decided to rest and continue the search in the morning. When David saw them, he became very worried. He thought to himself, This is the perfect time to kill him. However, David could not kill Saul. David was loyal and he wanted to know why Saul wanted him dead. So when everyone was asleep, David crept towards King Saul and cut a part of his robe. In the morning, he showed the piece of cloth to King Saul and said, My Lord, while I had the chance to kill you, I did not. I am your Lord's servant. Then why did you want to kill me? Seeing David, Saul's anger went away. David is so loyal. Isn't that one?